video, we're going to discuss queue durability and dynamic provisioning. A consuming application can bind to a queue to receive messages from it. Should that consumer disconnect, it can reconnect and receive any messages that were received by the queue while it was disconnected. Some applications require all messages, uh, whether they're connected or not, whereas some applications actually only need the messages uh, when they are connected. The most common case is an application that needs those messages even when they disconnect. So imagine an online store, uh, you have orders coming in, you need to ensure that you process all of those orders, whether the consuming application is connected or not. Uh, so when it later connects, it can receive those messages. What about an application that is sending requests uh, and only wants to receive those responses while it's connected? If it disconnects, responses are going to be kind of stale and, uh, and not as relevant to, any of that, to it anymore. Uh, so imagine you are searching for flights. You make your search for flights, you see the current available options. Uh, should you walk away from the computer and come back, you don't necessarily want to see those stale options because maybe the flight's fully booked, maybe there's a flight that was booked and now there's a seat available. So you'd want to re-request and receive the latest options. So in this case, we can have a queue that's dynamically created by the client application. Uh, it creates the queue and only receives messages while it's connected. Should it disconnect and reconnect later on, uh, it would re-request for the messages and receive the latest. So what about the differences here? We have two types of durability with Solace, uh, a durable queue and a non-durable queue or a temporary queue. A durable queue is explicitly created and deleted by administrators or by client applications. A non-durable queue is uh, explicitly cre created by only client applications, and that queue is actually automatically deleted should that client disconnect for more than 60 seconds. Consumers. A durable queue can have one or many consumers, whereas a non-durable queue can only have one consumer. This is because we need to tie the lifespan of the queue to that one consumer that created it. The naming convention. So for a durable queue, uh, it's an explicit name creation by the administrator or client application. For a non-durable queue, you can explicitly name it in your application or have it automatically be generated uh, by the API by Solace. So dynamic provisioning. Administrators can take full control of creating the queues and leave that up to your operations team or your or application support team. Um, or you can push that onto the client applications to do. Uh, the client applications would be provided with permissions to do so and they can provision a durable or non-durable queue. Now, what if you want to meet somewhere in the middle? As an administrator, you want your client applications to create the queues but you don't want them to create with any properties uh, available. You can create what's called a template or create from queue. And when a client application goes to provision a queue, they would basically copy and paste that template queue and give it a new name. Now let's look at the considerations. Administrator created queues. Uh, they can only create durable queues and properties cannot be modified by client applications. However, Solas does allow you uh, to subscribe to a topic on a queue. So now the queue is the topic subscriber. And you can allow client applications to modify that topic subscription. For application created queues, a couple more considerations here. So first off, uh, they can create durable or non-durable queues. They must have permission to be able to create anything. Um, so this is a client profile setting. They can only delete an application created queue. So if an administrator creates a queue, a client application can't delete that queue. 
Uh, administrator options to control resources. So this is in reference to that template queue. You create a template queue and client applications must copy paste the properties of that queue. Uh, the final piece there, queue capability mismatch. If your client application is trying to create a queue uh, and it's you've already previously run the same application, you've modified a couple things. If that queue still exists on Solace and they try to recreate that queue, they could hit an issue because of that capability or property mismatch. So that's something to just keep in mind. Make sure if you're uh, consistently creating a queue that will stay on Solace, uh, the properties are the same across. Let's now look at a demo of creating a queue administratively and creating one via a client application. For this demo, I'm going to use Solace PubSub Plus Cloud. I have already started a service and we're going to first create our queue administratively. So I'm going to click on the Manage Service button to open the PubSub Plus Manager. To create our queue, we'll go to the Queues tab and click the green plus button in the top right corner. Give your queue a name click create and the next window you'll see uh, is the window to set the properties for your queue. We're going to leave these properties as is. And that's it. That's how you create your uh, queue administratively. To create your queue via a client application, we'll walk over how you can create it with our native APIs. Here I have some sample code to provision a queue on my PubSub Plus Cloud instance. If you're interested in looking at this code, you can clone or download it from github.com forward slash Solace Training. The repository name is Solace Simple Guaranteed PubSub. We'll be looking at the provision queue application. So I'm gonna create two queues through this application. One is going to be non-durable and one is going to be durable. We'll start off with the non-durable endpoint and we can see the code here on how we provision it. So we have established our connection to Solace. We create an endpoint properties object and set the endpoint properties for our queue. To create a non-durable or temporary endpoint, we're going to create the queue object via the create temporary queue method. To actually create your queue, you're going to start your consumer flow and your flow receiver. Once you start that, your queue is automatically provisioned. So I'm going to compile this code with the gradlu assemble. And once that's built, we will run the provision queue application. Okay, so just to confirm, we'll go to our queue tab and all we have for our queues is the demo one we previously created using the UI. We'll run the application. It's attempting to provision the queue. We can see the queue is created. There's currently zero consumers. So because this is a non-durable endpoint, uh, we would expect a consumer to be connected at all times. In this case, our consumer is disconnected and we are now waiting uh, and providing that consumer with 60 seconds to be able to reconnect to the queue. If they don't, we will delete the queue from Solace. While we wait for that 60 seconds, we can go back to our code and there's only a couple things we need to do to modify it to create a durable queue. We're actually going to comment out the queue object line here on line 78. We're going to uncomment the line on 73 uh, where we create the queue object using the create queue method. And the line on 75 needs to be uncommented to actually provision the queue on the solace. The flag at the end, flag ignore already exists, will ensure if the queue already exists on Solace, we will not error out of our application because of that. So let's 
save the application. We'll recompile. And we will rerun the provision queue application. Let's go back to the PubSub Plus Manager, refresh, and we can see provisioned queue has been created, which is our durable queue. You'll notice the temporary queue with the hash PDP name has been removed because it was a full minute since that client had disconnected, so Solace deleted that queue. And that was our demonstration on how to administratively create a queue and how to create a queue through a client application, specifically using our JCSMP or Java API. Thanks for watching.